Today we're reading Acts 24, verses 1 through 9. And after five days, Ananias the high priest ascended with the elders, with a certain orator named Tertullus, who informed the governor against Paul. It was called forth, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, See that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence. We accept it always, in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. Notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of thy clemency a few words. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, who also have gone about to profane the temple, whom we took and would have judged according to our law. But the chief captain, Lysias, came unto us, and with great violence took him away out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come unto thee, by examining of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all these things, whereof we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, saying that these things were so. The Jewish leaders make their way to Caesarea to argue their case before Felix. We see that Ananias, the high priest, is there, along with others from the Sanhedrin. They use a lawyer named Tertullus to make their case. Tertullus is a Roman name, and he may have been a Gentile that understood both Jewish traditions and the Roman procedures, and was thus hired as a lawyer of sorts. Others believe he may have been a Hellenistic Jew, a Jew who had lived by Roman traditions. This scenario would also make him valuable to represent Jews in a Roman court. In either case, he's known as Tertullus, and pleads the case for the Jewish leaders. He begins, as one might expect, I guess, with flattery to Felix. He mentions that they enjoy great quietness because of Felix, and that Israel is blessed by Felix's governance, for which they are thankful. None of this is true, however. There were many uprisings and insurrections during this time, and the Roman government interfered in the Jewish administration quite frequently. As for appreciating Felix's leadership, that was also a lie. We will see later in this chapter that Felix gets replaced by a new governor. The Jewish historian Josephus reported that at that time, the Jewish leaders went all the way to Rome to accuse Felix of many misdeeds. I guess honesty is not required when the intent is mere flattery. I'm reminded of Proverbs 29, verse 5, that warns, A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. I believe this is why Paul says we are to be speaking the truth in love. Truth ought to be important to us as Christians. It's easy to dismiss some things as white lies or necessary exaggerations, but that should not be the case with us when the very spirit of truth, to use Jesus' own words, dwells within us. But the lies don't stop with simple flattery. Tertullus begins to paint Paul in terms that he hopes will sound dangerous to the Roman government. Paul is referred to as a pestilent fellow, from the word for plague. This is to imply that Paul is dangerous. He then calls him a mover of sedition. This phrase paints Paul as one who stirs up uprisings, something they knew Felix would be keen to prevent. Then he calls Paul a leader of a sect, again painting him as one who would have followers and could cause problems for Felix. Lastly, Tertullus mentions the original charge, blaspheming the temple. This is tossed in at the end to give a specific reason for why the Jews would have arrested him expecting to handle the punishment themselves. But they know that accusation will not hold to much scrutiny. So they put it after all the other accusations that would be more important to Felix. And the interesting thing is that none of these are true. Paul was not stirring up trouble for the Roman government. The only times he had been involved in uprisings, they were creation, the creation of local non-believing Jews, not Paul. And of course we know that he had not done anything to blaspheme the temple, as the accusation was based on that incorrect assumption made by the Asian Jews that day in the temple. To wrap all this up, the Jewish leaders all added their agreement that what Tertullus said was true. We will see Paul's rebuttal in the next passage. For now, let's reflect on the damage that lies can do. Let's take a moment to examine ourselves and make sure that as representatives of Christ, our words line up with His righteousness.